about 31, I had a question coming out of section 5.1, number 41. And here we were given a graph and we were told, hey, can you get the equation for this graph? And just looking at this graph, I notice it's a parabola. Oh, let me write the word parabola correctly. So if I have a parabola, fantastic. I know I'm going to have, you have a couple forms, right? You can do ax squared plus bx plus c, or you can do a times x minus h squared plus k. And since I can actually see the vertex here, let me erase my little circle. I'm going to go ahead and use the vertex form. And when I say vertex, right, in this case, I have a happy parabola. It's facing up. So I have an absolute minimum here at negative 1, comma 2. And what I'm going to do, and let me get my highlighter, for this negative 1, I'm going to plug it in for h. All right, for the positive 2, I'm going to plug it in for k. And you can start to see my work down on this side of things. Right, I leave the a there. But this gets me to x plus 1 squared plus 2. And if you're worrying or wondering where the plus 1 came from, it's x minus h. And since my h is negative, I have x minus a negative 1. Now, what that does leave me finding, right, I still need to find this a value, right? How do we find that coefficient, that stretch factor? And what you need in a parabola is you need one other point, right? That's why actually part of the reason why the vertex is so cool. With the vertex, you can actually get the equation of the parabola with just two points because the vertex is so darn important. If I didn't have the vertex and I wanted to get to like standard form like this, it would take a lot more effort. It's not as much fun. And you might be thinking, none of this is fun, but I would argue some of it is. Anywho, the other point I'm going to take, I'm going to take, or I hope, I, I'll have to look at my notes. I like to take easier points. Grid marks are good, and the y-intercept is great. So what I'm going to do here, since I know my function so far is a times x plus 1 squared plus 2, I'm going to plug in 3 for my y value and 0 for my x value. And then that leaves me with just solving for a, right? And now it's arithmetic, right? 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So this becomes a plus 2 on the right side. That's equal to 3. And when I solve for that, a is going to equal 1 also. And I'm going to hope as I scroll down, that's the point. Oh, I didn't even pick that point. How sick. I picked another one. And that's OK, because we I picked 1, 6, actually. And I'll scroll back up and look at that. But it was the same idea. I plugged in 6 for y, 1 for x solve for a. I still got a equaling 1 because a is equal to 1. And let me scroll back up here. Ah, 1, 6, if I take a look at it, it's not. It's a good point to pick, right? 1, 6, that fell on a grid. But now that I'm doing it for the second time, I would actually argue the y-intercept is better. Look, I made myself better. Love it. So as we go through that, we've got this model. Now, if I want to write it in general form, I need to FOIL this out. So this would be x plus 1 times x plus 1 plus 2. So if I FOIL this out, this would be what? x squared plus x plus x plus 1 plus 2. And if I'm working up, this is x squared plus 2x plus 3. So there's the general form if you want. I, I probably would just leave it in vertex form. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.